Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. We love receiving video requests from our viewers. Whenever possible, we try to accommodate those requests. While it's simply not feasible to show full restoration on camera, if we get a part people ask about enough, we're gonna to try to do a video on it. One request we get all the time is how to install a headliner. We've already shown you how to install TMI's one piece headliner, which honestly, it's a lot easier to install than a factory style. But if you're looking to keep your car original, today we're walking through the basics on how to install a factory style headliner using the 68 Mustang GT Fastback. We're going to be using TMI's original style headliner for our installation. As you can see, it has the original texture. It looks just like a factory headliner you would find in your car when it was brand new. The headliner is a fairly involved installation. There's a lot more parts you're going to need besides just the material itself. You need new windshield weather stripping, new rear window weather stripping, new sealant for the glass, headliner glue. You're also going to pick up some wind lace. You want to get enough to replace your factory wind lace and then actually buy an extra roll because you want to use this when you install the headliner. We'll show you how. Like we mentioned before, this is a very involved installation. I wouldn't suggest it for a first time installer. We start by prepping our car for the installation by removing the factory headliner. You can simply cut it and remove it. But to remove it properly and install the new one properly, you have to remove your rear window, your front window, as well as your door runs. Once you remove your factory headliner, you can throw it away, but you want to make sure you retain these rods. It'll also make your life a little bit easier once you remove them. Line them up in the order you remove them so you know where they go when you put them back in. Before you start the installation of your new headliner, there's a couple things you'll want to do inside. If you're installing the headliner insulation, which we do suggest, that just sticks simply to the roof, install that first. And you want to grab all the screws that you removed, your visors, your mirror, seat belts, anything you may have removed, and put them actually back in the holes. That way when you put your headliner into place, you can press them against the screws, you'll know where to cut for those holes. At the same time, you actually have different holes up here for the headliner bows. Make a note on which ones the bows came out of. It's best to put it back in the same holes. You want to open up your new headliner and find enough space to lay it out flat so you can install the rods. The first thing you want to do though is measure to the center and mark it. You'll need that when you actually install it in the car. Once you have it spread out and marked, you can install your headliner rods. On a coupe, it's real easy to tell the back of the headliner because you'll have a huge piece of material coming off here. And the fastback is a little more subtle the piece that comes out further is where the rear is. You want to know where that is so when you install your rods and put them in the right place. Now we'll just fold it up and ready to install the rods. I should have mentioned this earlier, it's not a bad idea to get some help with this installation. Holding the rods in place and the headliner can be tough, and especially when removing the glass, the glass is quite heavy and obviously it can break. So if you have some help, it'll make your job a lot easier. Before you install the rear rod, you want to make sure these two hooks are still in place. Coops and Fastbacks both have the exact same thing. When you put the rear rod in, these hooks are actually going to go through the material and hold it in place. Again, put it in the hole that you marked. I'm going to take these little hooks and make sure you put them underneath the rod and then go through the material. Now we'll do the next hole. And again up front. If you remember in the beginning, I told you to buy an extra roll of wind lace. This is where you're going to use it. To hold your headliner in place, you want to cut it into a bunch of small pieces. It'll make your installation a lot easier. Once you cut up the wind lace, it's time to start stretching the front of your headliner. The best way to do it from inside the car. You want to pull on it, not real hard, but you got to get it snug, get it over this lip here, and then use the pieces of wind lace to hold it in place. You want to start from the center and work your way out. Once 
Once you have the front tight and secure, you can now move to the back and do the exact same thing. Once you finish with the back, the headliner should be nice and tight now. Don't worry about these wrinkles. You see, once you pull the sides tight, these are all going to go away. You just want to make sure your front to back is nice and tight. Now we're going to start on the sides. You want to make sure you leave the front five or six inches open. That way when you pull on the sides, once you have that tight, then you can pull that up to match it. Now that we have the sides nice and tight, you can see all the wrinkles are gone from the center of our headliner. It looks exactly as it should. Now we can move forward to the front corners. Getting this part right can be tough because you have to basically get it stretched in the corner, but also around the windshield frame and where your door run's gonna go. It's easy to get a wrinkle in here. You wanna start from the front, just basically pull it tight, and you're gonna eventually have to cut a slit in this, almost like a pie cut, to get it to clear. You want this to be in as tight and as smooth as possible when it's installed. At this point, it's just the wind lace holding it on, so you can mess with it a couple times and get it just right. Because later we're going to remove it, and then once we glue it, you're going to be stuck with it. So make sure your cuts and everything are smooth so it lays like it should. Now we're going to do the same thing with the rear part of the headliner. Again, pull this up here and trim it, and the same thing over here. In this case, it doesn't have to be quite as tight as the front. Once we put the quarter trim panel back in place, it will cover part of the front. So you want to leave a little bit of slack so make sure this can go back on without ripping your headliner. Again, leaving a little bit of slack here is okay because the panel that comes across will hold it down. Just make sure when you push on this corner, the wrinkles go away, which they do. We're ready to move on. Next, you want to grab your headliner glue. It's important to use the right style glue for this part of the installation. You want to get something like this. It has the brush like that built into it. What you're going to do is start off in sections. You're going to start with half the windshield first. What you'll do is pull off the wind lace. You're going to pull the headliner down, put glue on the headliner, as well as the metal channel on both sides. What you'll do is let it set up for a little bit, then put it back into place by stretching it, and you'll reinstall the wind lace. and make sure you get underneath and on top. And follow the crease in the headliner that you made when you folded it on to know where to put it there. And once you have the surfaces covered, you want to wait two, three, even up to five minutes. Wait till it actually gets tacky to the touch and then put the headliner back into place. And once it's nice and tacky, you can pull the headliner back up into place, stretch it out just like before. And we'll repeat the process on the other side, and then the rear window, and then both side windows. Once you've glued all four sides of the headliner in place, you want to reinstall the wind lace to hold it, double check you don't have any wrinkles, and let it sit for at least 24 hours before moving on to the next step. Once your glue is dried, you're ready to install the finished wind lace across the sides here. We're going to start in the front, work our way back, and we'll move these hold pieces while we install our finish piece.
Now you want to grab a fresh razor blade and cut off the excess material on the outside of the wind lace. It doesn't have to be perfect because the weather strip channel will go right up in here and cover it, but basically get it right on top of the wind lace, make it as clean as possible. Now you want to repeat the process with the driver door. Now we're going to do the same basic process with the front rear window. The difference here, we're going to leave the wind lace in place that's holding it and then cut it off. We'll remove the wind lace when we go to install the actual window. We'll leave this in place till we reinstall our factory windshield. Once we install the windshield, the windshield along with the factory style weather stripping is going to hold the front edge of our headliner in place. Same process with the rear window. Leave the wind lace in place. We're just going to cut and trim it. Then when we install our glass, that'll actually hold the back of the headliner in place. That finishes the actual installation of the headline, and now we're going to reinstall our rear glass, our front glass, and our weather strip channels, and our installation will be finished. If you're installing new glass, this step isn't going to be an issue, but if you're reinstalling a window that's already been installed, you want to make sure you get all the old caulk off the edges before you reinstall it. Once you have your glass clean, the first step of the installation is actually to install the weather strip. You want to get it out and spread it out on the windshield, roughly where it's going to go, and then we can begin the installation. The easiest place to start is with the edge. I'm going to pull it up, slide it over the glass. And then we'll just take your time and work your way around. This is one of those installs that's probably going to look a lot easier on camera than it actually is. The weather strip is a tight fit, so getting it on the glass will take some time. All right, once you get the weather strip stretched around the windshield and you get feeling back in your fingers, you can move on to the strip caulk. What you want to do is pick up some strip caulk, this inner weather strip right here. Once again, you're going to pull back the edge and lay strip caulk in the bottom all the way around. I'm going to go back through and make sure you get it all the way in the bottom of the channel. Grab another piece and keep on going. For the next step, you'll need about 14 feet of string. The string is actually what you're going to use to make this inner weather strip where you just installed the strip caulk go around the inside of your windshield frame. You want to start at the top and then work your way around, putting this in the exact same channel you just installed your strip caulk. Make sure you overlap here at the top, tape that side down, and we're ready to install our windshield. Before you're ready to put the windshield in the car, check all of your clips for your moldings. You want to make sure they're in the right position, because once you get the glass in, you're not going to be able to adjust these anymore. Once your clips are all good, we're going to remove the wind lace that was holding our headliner in place before installing the windshield. When you put the windshield in, you want to get some help. The glass itself is on the heavier side, plus it's large and kind of hard to handle. Getting an extra set of hands will make it a lot easier to put it on the car. And it rest on the bottom, then kind of push it down into place. Make sure it's sitting flat, and you want to kind of have an even gap all the way around. Make sure your clips are visible on the bottom as well as on the sides and top. You're ready to move inside the car. This part you'll also want to have two people. You want someone on the outside pushing against the windshield while you remove the string from the inside. And as you pull the string again, make sure the weather strip is going over the inside. The corner is the most critical part. 
and make special care to make sure that the corner gets over. Once you make it to the bottom corner, now you want to do the other side first before you go across the bottom. Now that the windshield's in the car, we're ready to seal it. The sealant is messy. There's just no way around it. So before we start installing it, get some good body shop tape and put tape on all the body panels around the area to protect your paint. Now we're ready to start with the sealant. You'll need three tubes of sealant. Let me make sure you have a caulk gun, something to cut the tip of the sealant with, and again, some paper towels. Like I said, this is gonna be a messy job. You might be wondering about this tube here. What we did is grab some scrap metal and made little brackets to hold the top of it. The reason being, you gotta kind of force this under the weather strip, and this moves really easily. By strengthening it, it makes it a lot easier to get under the weather strip and get as deep as we need to to get a good seal. We we'll get the tip up underneath the seal. At this point, you probably understand why a lot of glass shops don't want to touch this job. Once you've sealed the inside, now you do the exact same thing, except you're going to go on the outside. So between the seal and the actual body, and again, all the way around the outside to get a good seal coat. Make sure you get it down in there. When you come to the clips, you sort of want to try to get it like up under the clip. I'm gonna go over the top of it and on the other side. I'm gonna go back across the top and especially the corners. Make sure you got a nice thick coat up there, unless you're caulking a bathroom. As long as you're down the channel, you can't really use too much. It's better to use too much than not enough or it won't seal. Once you have a nice thick coating of sealant installed, you want to repeat the exact process on the rear window. The gasket installs the same way as well as the sealant. Once you have the glass done, now we're going to clean it up. You want to grab some sort of a solvent, a gooby gone, goof off, something like that that's not going to damage the paint, but that'll get this off. Once you have the front rear glass sealed, you want to take it out and water test it. We're going to show you how to do that soon, but before you do so, we want to reinstall the weather strip channels in the doors. Now we're going to install the roof rail weather stripping. It's held in place by two plastic clips at the bottom, then it goes in this channel here, and there's a screw in the front. You want to use a light amount of weather strip adhesive when you install this. Put the back in first and then pop the front in. Now we're outside and we're ready to water test our windshield. Just like a few other jobs in this installation, this is definitely a two man job. You might think you want to get the hose and just pressure wash and spray it as hard as possible. You really don't want to do that. You want to start in the middle, just use low pressure and move slowly. That way you can get an idea if it does leak, where the leak's at and you can work on it. You ready, Jeff? How are we looking, good? All right, no leaks here. Repeat the process for the rear window and ready to reinstall our moldings. Now that the windshield's been installed, sealed, and we leak tested it, the last step is gonna be to put our moldings back on the car. The first thing you wanna do is go around the tape part of the windshield and everywhere there's a clip, you wanna make a mark. Then when you're putting the moldings on, you know where the clips are, because that's where you're gonna put your pressure down and make them lock into place.
You're gonna to wanna to start with the lower piece. The three things you're gonna need for this part of the installation, it's gonna be a mallet, a piece of wood, and some patience. You wanna take your time. These can bend very easily. They're very simple to damage. You wanna start by putting the lower one in place and then make sure it's centered. Check that the edges are in the exact same spot on both sides, because once you get this in place, you're not gonna have any side-to-side -side adjustment. Once you have it in place, you're gonna start with the corner and simply start pressing it into the clips. Can be a challenge to get in the clips. Sometimes you get lucky if you had to do it with your hands. Other times, you have to break out the wood and the mallet. You definitely feel it when you get it right. You wanna make sure the angled piece inside is angled under the clip. If you put it on top, you'll bend the clip, it's not gonna go into place. So you wanna make sure you're almost kinda of pulling out and then pushing down, and you'll actually feel it slide into the clip. If you can't push it up, use your hammers and bump it into place. Now we can move on to the sides. You wanna make sure once your bottom's in place, the side is gonna slide on the bottom and this edge here is going to get pushed in behind your clips. Now repeat the process with the other side. Now basically the same process for the top. I'm going to start with the driver's side. Honestly, you can start with either side. Just make sure the very center is not pushed all the way in until both pieces are together and then you push them in as one. Now we'll slide this into the other piece. Make sure the top and bottom are both in. Once you have the moldings on, you can grab our solvent, we'll clean everything up, then we can remove the tape. Once you have everything sealed up, now we're gonna reinstall our visors to finish up our installation. Remember we told you earlier to put the screws in place. The reason we do that is you can actually push against them and you'll see the head of the screw. Makes it easy to know exactly where you gotta cut. Put a little slit, push it right over the screw. If you have the screws, you make a little hole in the center. Now repeat the process on the other side. Once you're finished with the windshield moldings, you want to repeat the process with the rear window, install the interior trim panels, and your installation's finished. It's not a good install for a first timer, but if you take your time, it is something you can do at home. You want to make sure you have some help, give yourself the better part of a weekend, and you'll be back on the road in no time.